the, this, this whole idea of wood firing is so intriguing because it involves all the natural elements. It's about yeah, like 30 years project because the, it started when I went to Japan as an apprentice. So that's the time I really wanted to build a kiln. But the life goes up and down a lot. So even though I moved out here, hoping I can build the kiln, I couldn't build it right away. I was at the Creative Arts Workshop, mm -hmm. uh, being a, kind of a, a group of the studio potters who was running the pottery shop. Mm -hmm. And that's the time when I went to um, Boston, Mr. Shimaoka was having a show. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about Japanese potters at the time. And my friend said, oh, there is a Japanese potter's show is going on, let's go. So we went together and I was uh, <laughs> bold enough to, I took my, the pictures of my pottery. Uh -huh. I was making those cups and things like that. <laughs> so when I went, I guess we were lucky. We had dinner together with this um, uh, Mr. Shimaoka. So I showed him my, uh, the pictures of my work. And uh, then we were talking and I was asking if, it's, uh, if he takes apprentice from the U.S. Mm -hmm. and I really love to come over. And he did not say yes or no. So after he went back, I wrote him and I didn't hear anything. And I wrote him maybe three times. And then finally, he sent me a letter. I can come that summer. Head worker gave me this cup, you know, teacup, and um, that's the kind of uh, they produce. He, uh, Mr. Shimaoka make all the uh, original design or shape, so everybody makes his work. So I was just making every day this cup, and the first few days was making tools. Kind of, you have to make certain tools to do certain things. So when I started making, at the end of the day, uh, this person comes and he said, he will check every cup. <laughs> back, to, back to clay pile for recycling clay pile. <laughs> and then gradually he took, okay, you know, he took few and these are going to be fired. <laughs> One of the happiest moment, <laughs> times of my life. Because every day, you know, st everybody starts working at 8 o'clock. So it's not just like learning pottery, but uh, just kind of observing the life of a potter. You know, it's just like a whole cycle from one firing to another. So when I came back to Portland, this was a, Portland was a completely new place to me. But since I wanted to build a wood burning kiln, I started looking for a place where I can build a wood burning kiln. Mm. And I was um, at Osaka, a new slew was giving a salt, salt kiln building workshop. Mm -hmm. So I was taking his workshop and I was telling him I'm looking for, I like to build a wood burning kiln. And I'm looking for a place where there is a house and a studio <laughs> and a source of wood. <laughs> And he said, you have an ideal place. I think in U.S., one thing is it's always so group-oriented from the beginning. I think my case is one of the few just did by myself. I did a kind of a very extensive research trip in Japan and visiting all those kiln sites. And I came up with this uh, design. Kind of, I have certain uh, yohen, meaning um, special kiln effects in wood firing kiln and uh, depending on which area and how if the work is facing the flame or area maybe you might have more ash fall or some area you might have much less ash fall but lots of uh, flame movement mm -hmm. and some area the work is really buried under ember, hot ember. So depending on what kind of effect you are looking for, you design and you build the kiln. And then I had this, my friend's friend, who was very young, but he was a professional kiln builder. And he wanted to come over 
and uh, built this kiln. So, so we just talked about, and so he modified my plan, and he, he built it. You know, originally you have a slope hillside, mm -hmm. and they dug a hole or a tunnel or tube. So going up here, so you make a fire, uh -huh. and it's a natural draft. Yeah. So everything comes from the bottom up. Yeah. I used to do lots of stoneware, dinnerware sets, and then I was full-time father until my parents became sick. And then that was 88 and 89, my mother passed away. So 92, I started working again, but then that's the time I started doing more clay sculpture. It's almost like not thinking, you know, the things I felt like making turned out to be clay sculpture. I have normally uh, firewood delivered, cut and split, but it's no, normally split into like a half or quarter size, and then we have to split into three to five different sizes. Uh, for seven day firing, right now it's eight to nine cores of wood. That whole kiln is about 110 cubic foot. It's just so many process. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think one individual is safer. You know, I don't like to have crack at the last minute. Just teaming up people with somebody experienced uh -huh. and not that experienced. So that will be a good thing because we need kind of a young, enthusiastic people. Yes. <laughs> this time uh, we were lucky. We have like three people per shift. Every single piece you have to add the wedding so it, they don't stick. It will help for the ash won't going to be, you know, stuck on the shelf too much and easy to clean. Loading, since that requires another, you know, extra four or five days, it's important to have everything out there so you kind of uh, see the whole work and see what's the best way to load the kiln because the wood fire, the loading is very crucial because how the kiln is loaded kind of determines how the flame will be traveling through. Or something, sometimes you like to have some pieces almost touching each other or intentionally make them touch with, uh, of course, some uh, clay wad or something between so you can uh, separate them later. And that will kind of cause some uh, turbulence of the flame if it's a small area. It's just like the mountain stream. When you look at the mountain stream with all the rocks, mm -hmm. big rocks, small rocks, yeah. and the stream is going through between the rocks, yeah. and where the rocks are very close to each other, the, it will go very fast, you know? Yeah. So similar thing is happening in the kiln. Well, you got a lot of stuff stacked behind you there. Yeah, That's I was. pretty uh, impressive. I worked until 2.30. Did you really? So in this area, you can really load quite a bit too. Okay, you know? load it pretty yeah. tight. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. especially if it's glazed one. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a some kind of structural difference between an anagama and a fukugama? You're calling yours huh, fukugama. Fukugama is just the name of this kiln. Fu means wind and ko is light, so wind and light kiln. I think that nature gives me lots of inspiration, and those are the kind of things in a way, like even like looking outside, mm -hmm. I see the kind of wind going through because the tree moves, and also, of course, light. Of course, you can see the rays of light sometimes depending on the atmosphere but those are the kind of things you don't see but you will feel through something you see okay. right yeah, yeah. so we kind of try to I try to express something uh, I do not see through what I see mm -hmm. trying to express it in using the clay in three-dimensional forms so always kind of something going back and forth. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I thought the wind and light is just perfect. So we started last night, but 
Of course, it's been going out like this. Kiln has been sitting in this rain yeah. for whole year. Yeah. So the dampness is really enormous. Oh. So you do need to get rid of all those dampness yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. We will start pushing in, pushing in to mm -hmm. these openings gradually, just a little bit at a time. So how often do you start? Uh, right now, like every 10 minutes or so, kind of. Well, I guess it's been 15 minutes. I stirred once. Oh, I see. And stoked twice. Oh, I see. So, so you're stoking based on what the temperature is? Uh, both on what the temperature is doing, but much more importantly, what's happening with the smoke in the back. And later on, it gets much more exciting when you've got flames shooting everywhere. You cannot fire by yourself, and this is more like a, it, it, it is a teamwork. I need minimum of six because I think it's good to have two people per shift. So normally I have an eight-hour shift. Seven days, yeah, round the clock, 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, that's why more so I like to kind of uh, make some connection with the schools. So like for a workshop or like master's program or independent study or, you know, because I have uh, enough flat area, maybe they can build more experimental kilns. There's, uh three students from Oren College Art and Craft that are here right now, and I'm the ceramic studio manager. Oh, yeah. And so this is, you know, we're trying to, this is the start of a developing relationship with Rur and the Fukugawa. You know, with our urban location, we can't have a wood kiln. We have a kind of a quasi wood kiln. It's called a fast fire, but uh, it, it's, you're just kind of using wood as fuel. You're not getting a lot of effect. Uh, from the ash melting or any of those other wonderful things that happen. So these, you know, you can see the um, kind of wood ash melting down and all the beautiful uh, colors just come out of the natural effects. And also this one too. So this has all the kind of nice flashing colors and ash, all the effects are coming in one piece. Yeah. Yeah. So you see for the stoking, just focus on stoking. Okay. <laughs> Other people will provide the wood. So the temperature will drop a little bit. Yeah because there's all that raw fuel in there that needs to absorb heat and get up to temperature. So it kind of steals a little bit of the heat and then it's gonna, it'll rise as soon as all of that fuel starts to combust. So it's better to watch the smoke more than the pyrometer. Mm -hmm. The kind of a pyrometer is good to use just as a guide. Oh, that's a logbook. Uh -huh. You keep record of the temperature and also the damper and the temperature. Any comment you like to write down? Yeah. Don't get socialized. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we are here just like a caretaker or trustee or stewardship of the place. So hopefully the place is going to be well utilized. When the kiln was built and when the first firing, I just felt like uh, Finally, I am at the starting line. <laughs>